Any Fair 2, Chapter 14, The Changing Seasons. It's been a whirlwind few days, but you're finally back home. Yawning, you swing your legs out of bed, look out the window to see. It's the first snow of the year. I have to call Jenny. Have you looked outside yet? It's snowing. Ugh, I will never understand your obsession with solid water falling from the sky. Which is why I always call you on the first snow of the year. One of these days I'm going to convince you of its magical properties. Besides, this means the holiday season is right around the corner. You love the holidays. I hate Christmas. You can love time off from my work without freezing cold, Anna. Which, I guess we skipped Halloween. Well, I can't wait for... Mm, my first winter with the Daltons. Are you and Sam going to start all sorts of cutesy holiday traditions together? Maybe. Something like that. Although I think I'm uh, most excited for the corporate competition to finally finish. And then you and Sam can be together forever. I swear your life is like something out of a movie. Yeah, Hallmark, but not as good. Yeah, one with a surprise twist at the end. After a road trip to Monte Carlo, I'm a little worried about Robin. She won't... <sighs> make things easy. She's out for blood this time. Just make sure it's not yours, okay? You're about to respond when your phone pings with a new message. From Sam. As much as I'd love to whine about my problems all day, Sam just texted me. And I better let you go. I'll talk to you later. Mwah. You tell Jenny goodbye and then check your texts. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, yourself. What are you and the boys up to today? Funny you should ask. Ding dong. There's a pattern of rapid knocking on your door and you smile as you pull it open. The boys lunge at you, each one grabbing a leg. Help. Send help. I need an adult. Whoa there. Anna, we missed you. Uh, we were awake at six, but mom said we had to wait until after breakfast to come over. Actually, what I said was, it's rude to visit anyone before the sun is up. Well, that's a lie. She even made us wait until you texted back to knock. Uh, you don't care if we visit when you when it's dark, do you, Anna? No, that's my preferred time. You can visit as long as you bring coffee. She smirks and hands you a paper cup she's been hiding behind her back. You take a long, satisfying sip. Ah. <sighs> Now are you happy to see us? You swoop down and hug both the twins at once. Don't tell me your mom, but you're both better than coffee. Well, that's a horrible lie. We can't stay long. We just wanted to invite you to some ice skating with us. Uh, we always go on the first snow, but it's uh, being way more fun with you. And we're uh, stopping to pick up Liliana on the way. She had real reason or real lessons and everything. It was at the Opera Charity event. Liliana and the boys have been inseparable. Yeah, good for her and the boys. Not all of the boys. I found a place upstate, so it'll be a private family outing. Care to join us? You know how we ignore him. And yeah, why not? How can I say no to an offer like that? Let me grab my coat. You know, because I kind of am forced to by the choice of community. Send help! When you reach the rink, your group tumbles out of the car and heads towards the pond. As promised, it's a remote and picturesque setting that you have all to yourselves. It's so beautiful out here. Sam puts her arm around your waist. This is what we need for a private family get together. You're right. It's far away, there are only squirrels and Bigfoot to watch us. Uh, Bigfoot? Where? Mm, around her somewhere. She squeaks and hides behind Mason. Don't leave me, me! Uh, Bigfoot doesn't live in New York, so we have nothing to worry about. Anna's just being silly. 
That's me, the silliest. Ice skates, lace them up. You and Sam help the kids put on their skates, and then you all hit the ice. Catch me if you can! You won't get away that easily! Uh, wait for me! And Sam start to skate at a slower pace behind them. You know, it's been a long uh, while since I've uh, gone ice skating. Eh? You hit a slick patch of wet ice, and then your foot shoots out from underneath you. Whoa! I should grab Sam, fall, yes, bring Sam with us. You throw your arms out to steady yourself, catching hold of Sam. I've got you. He holds you tight as you get back your feet back up from underneath you. Thanks, that was a close one. Are you okay? You look her in deep in her eyes, getting lost into them. Never better. Uh, maybe we should um, hold hands while we skate, you know, just in case. If we must. The two of you uh, would make lazy circles around the pond as the twins zip around you. Liliana takes Lee, trying to teach the boys how to do some simple tricks. Have you guys ever tried the spiral? Uh, no? Okay. Then how about the bunny hop? Uh, like this? Uh, she's gonna wipe the ice with those two. That's the plan. With any luck, she'll have them all worn out by the time we head home. Well, then I make it look easy to fall down and get back up again. Tell me about it. My bones hurt just watching them. Yeah, you're as old as you feel. The wind feels cold against your face, but you can't stop smiling. Fresh air and the good company are just what you needed today. Okay, enough warming up. Are you ready? For what? For the race. We already set up the obstacle course. Oh. Uh, I get the feeling this is going to end in a road trip but to the emergency room. Eh, I mean, they are kids, so I'm sure it will. Don't worry, we made an easy one, says the child. First, you skate straight across to the other side. Then you slide under the big tree. And zigzag around the snow piles. Back to the start again. See? It's easy peasy. Right, easy peasy. Come on, you can line up next to me. Sam shrugs. This is a, and you, as all of you, take your places at the starting line. Just gotta keep my feet under me. On your mark. Get set. Go. All of you jump in action, skating as fast as you can across the pond. Once you reach the other side, you know the first obstacle is coming up. Oh man, I, I don't know. This one's a tough one. It's lined under the branch. You push forward, waiting for just the right time, then duck under the tree branch. Nailed it. How did she do that? She's supposed to be tall! Look out, Anna's on a tear. The race continues, and you can feel the others hot on your trail as you smoothly glide through the snowball piles. The finish line is in my sight. Not so fast. You guys behind you can see Sam just behind. You pump your legs harder and harder until victory. Just by a hair. I'd say mini hairs. How did you two do that? Aren't you supposed to be old? Listen, kid, you need to calm your shit. Well, uh, we'll just have to practice. Come on, Mickey. I'll be the timer this time. On your mark! Smiles, the boys head back to the starting line to race again without you and Sam this time. Now seems like the perfect time to grab some hot chocolate from the car. Join me. You and Sam head towards the parking lot together. You can see the kids skating on the uh, ice, but they're not paying any attention to you. It's because they're like, they're like, freedom! Do you really have hot chocolate in the car, or did you just want me uh, to yourself for a few minutes? Why not both? You know? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Both. He slips her arms around your waist, pulling you close. Her lips capture yours in a soft kiss made sweeter by the sweep of her tongue along yours. Sam. You wind your arms around her neck and return the kiss. She backs you up until you're pressed against the car. If it wasn't so cold, I'd strip you naked right here and now. It doesn't stop us in Soviet Russia! Few layers of clothes never stopped us before. I should slide my hands up her shirt. 
You slip your hands underneath the bottom of her top. You can feel her muscles jump beneath your touch as your fingers graze her bare skin. Your hands are like eyes, and your skin is like fire. The perfect combination. She gasps as you move your hands further up, but instead of pulling away, she presses into you closer, giving you pinned against the car. You trail your way up to her breasts, cupping them through her bra. If you don't stop that, I'm gonna kiss you senseless. Yeah, is that a promise? Her punishment is swept in delicious, capturing both your wrists. She holds you in place as her mouth crashes over yours. You give as good as you get, refusing to let her dominate the kiss. You're both breathless by the time you pull apart. We should, um, probably grab the hot cocoa now. You're right. We've gotten a bit carried away as it is. But that doesn't stop Sam from pulling you back in one for more, one more kiss. Your head is in a whirl and your whole body is thrumming. By the time she finally releases you, she steadies you on your feet before grabbing the thermoses from the car. Is there any, uh, marshmallows? Do, do we get some? It's important to know, at the end of the afternoon, you and the others skate your final laps around the ice. Seriously, you know, you, you use the marshmallow between tongues. What? See, I told you we just need to practice, Mickey. Kings of the eyes. Don't forget about the queen. No one asked you. <laughs> Sam skates up behind you, sliding her arm around your waist as she drops her voice low. Goddamn it. <laughs> All they really needed to do was wear their mom out. Your secret's safe with me. As you look around the ice, your fingertips are frozen and your feet are sore, but all in all, it was a perfect day. We'll go with that. Monday morning, it's back to business as usual. You walk in a lab with your head held high, knowing you did your best in Monte Carlo. Yeah, we came out number one. Look who's back! Now uh, finally, I'm starting to get boring around here again. Glad you didn't completely embarrass the division at the expo, Hannah. And my concerns when Sophia said she was taking you in my place. Hmm. And before he thinks I'm sleeping with Sophia. We heard you uh, had to do a live demo on the spot. That's true, but um, it was a team effort. I knew I could trust uh, in our product and our team, and it paid off. Uh, but we still have a lot of work ahead of us. Sophia wants us to be market ready by the end of the quarter. You think we can pull that off? If we crunch between now and then, it should be doable. I came up with a production schedule that outlines everyone's new role. You pass around the detailed schedule you came up with on the flight home. The team breaks off into the groups to get started. We missed you around here. Even as pouting the whole time. My wife was so all but banned me from eating more onion bagels. Uh, I feel bad for your wife, actually. Addy, I'm sorry. Your wife has no taste. No, uh, you had to deal with Evan. I imagine he was a lot. That's an understatement. Evan was probably just feels a bit threatened, but uh, he'll get over it. Willie, though. But now that you're back, everything can return to normal. Can it, though? Speaking of, hand me that chart, will ya? And a coffee. The morning passes in a blur of meetings, testings, troubleshooting. The rest of the team has already left for lunch when you're approached by one of the executive receptionists. Ah, oh, this is what you're doing when Royal Finale is on break. Excuse me, Miss Schuler. Uh, not at all. What can I uh, do you for? Well, I was asked to arrange a meeting between Evan Webb and Miss Dalton, but Dr. Webb said he was too busy before I could even get the request out. Hmm. Looks like the rest of the team is already gone. I really need someone for the environmental lab. Can you do it? Ah, uh, meeting with Sam. He was very clear about keeping boundaries at work. Yeah, because you can't represent your team without going upstairs and meeting with her for a normally scheduled meeting. You force yourself to stay calm. <laughs> Versus what else? Of course, I just need a few minutes to finish up here and I'll be ready. Thank you so much. She grins at you and passes Evan on her way out. He, he eyes you suspiciously. What did an executive assistant want from you? It was... About the meeting with Miss Dalton. You know, the one you were too busy for? But why would she ask you instead? I don't know, why don't you go fucking ask her? You gesture around to the empty lab. Um, the only one available? Hmm, 
We're gonna go spinning all of our division secrets. Secrets! He turns around abruptly, but something else's expression makes you feel uneasy. A few minutes later, you're on your way to Sam's office when the elevator stops in the lobby and you glance up and see... God help us all. What do you want? Lana, what are you doing here? Lana, I was having coffee. You're having coffee with Sophia. What are you doing here? We haven't seen you around since the opera, was it? I work here, but uh, for your best friend, Sophia, actually. Oh, I didn't realize you could do that. I wonder why Sophia never mentioned it. Because she's narcissistic, pessimistic. Like, she never mentions anything good about other people. Unless it benefits her. Sophia has, um... An alternative motive. I mean, no reason, because you know, but, you know, ulterior motive is what I'm thinking. I wouldn't be surprised if not telling you is part of her master plan somehow. She's always thinking of a jillion steps ahead anyway. Well, you're right about that. It was nice to see you, Lana, but I have a meaning to get to upstairs. Lana Smirk tells you that she has a good idea who you're going to see. Good for her Smirk, who gives a shit. Give Sam my love, won't you? I'm gonna throw a shoe at you. The door's closed before you have time to respond and you breathe a sigh of relief. I did not miss that woman. A few minutes later, you knock on Sam's office door and walk inside. Anna, what are you doing here? That's for a meeting. I also work in this building, in case you forgot. <laughs> Sam, um, you're the one who, uh, Asked to see me, even though number two actually sounds really good. I'm here for our 12.30 appointment. You wanted to meet with someone from the environmental lab? She scheduled that with you. I asked for Evan. You know what? Never mind. This is even better. That's plausible deniability. The record will show I asked to meet with Evan to start. Hmm, this is true. She clicks off her computer and moves towards the door. Um, are we going somewhere? If you're up for it, I've been trapped in the stuffy office all morning. Why don't we hold our meeting somewhere offside? It'll take us away from prying eyes, and we can discuss some private matters. Well, there goes plausible deniability. I could use the fresh air. Sure, if you're an idiot. Hey guys, how'd that plausibility to go? No, you know, we went offsite. You and Sam walk to a local coffee shop to take your meeting. The shop is nearly empty at this time of day, so Sam grabs a nearby uh, table near the back where you can do it and make it uncomfortable. Hey, you know what? Find me a coffee shop that's near empty. I needed this. I feel more productive already. Just wait until you try the coffee. You'll be bouncing off the walls until dinner time. Sam hands you a menu, letting her fingers linger against yours. I know you prefer to drink it black, but if you're willing to branch out a little, they have a really good spice blend that they put into their house coffee. Sounds perfect. Sam heads to the counter to place the order. When she returns, she's holding a plate of colorful cookies arranged on it. That doesn't look like coffee. Those are macaroons. The barista will bring out our drinks when they're ready. In the meantime, I figured we could use a treat. She slides and the seat next to you. The warm length of her thigh presses against yours. I thought this was supposed to be a serious meeting. This is serious. These macaroons are world famous. Here, close your eyes. We'll show you. Mmm. Player game. Keep your eyes open. Fine. Who might have stand in the way of world famous macaroons? Close your eyes and try to focus on the other senses. You can hear her gentle breath, feel the warm pulse of her body next to yours. Open your mouth for me. A shiver of longing tingles down your spine. Sam brings one of the macaroons to your lips. You bite to find a sugary sweet burst of cocoa on your tongue. Now oh, you're supposed to guess the flavor. Um, it's chocolate? Chocolate and... You shake your head, unsure. Sam offers you another bite. This time she allows one of her fingers to slip between your lips. What do you taste now? You give her finger a playful lick before focusing on the flavor on your tongue. Uh, it's chocolate plus mm, raspberry and rose. No, coconut and cardamom. Uh, the coconut gives a creamy richness, and the cardamom adds a depth of flavor. 
That's exactly right. She puts her hand on your knee under the table, lowering her voice. I swear your mouth is driving me mad right now. Kind of like how your fingers are making me feel. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Her hand slides up your thigh and your breath catches. You open your eyes and look at Sam. The breast is coming. <laughs> and not in that way. <laughs> <laughs> she clears her throat and puts her hand back on your knee, giving you a reassuring squeeze. Listen, I, I got a chuckle from that. Okay, shut up. Mm, you can't help but be pleased that she didn't pull away completely as she thanks the barista. House blend. Take a sip. It was supposed to be a combo blend. Oh, wow, you're right. This is amazing. I'm glad you like it. You take another sip, letting the warm drink, or drink warm you from the inside out. Alright, we should probably get down to business, or everyone at the office is going to wonder what happened to us. They probably already are. You put on the most professional expression, Sam smiles and plays along. Well, Miss Dalton, what can I do you for? Well, it's not so much you as the entire environmental division that I need. I had an idea for a small program that could potentially have a big impact. Sam leans close, her expression earnest. What do you know about recycling machine parts? Mm, it's not easy to do. It's all about reducing spin, like Robin. I never would do anything to hurt the company the way she did. We weren't talking about that? Of, of course not. I, I didn't mean... Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have snapped. It's just... She's a sore spot. You nod and return to the main topic of the conversation. Implementing a division-wide machine recycling program would take a lot of time and effort, but once it's up and running, it could make a, um, make a big difference. I'm not sure it'll um, help your department's bottom line by the holiday party, though. Startup costs are high. It could take years for this to have any start of, uh, or sort of, positive financial. But it would help the environmentalists, right? If handled correctly, yeah. Then that's what matters. We could use some input and oversight from the lab if you're willing to help us out. Well, I'm sure we could work out some sort of partnership between the robotics and environmental divisions. You can feel yourself starting to get excited. Opportunities like these are exactly why you wanted to work at Dalton in the first place. But uh, is this project a little, a little small for someone who's vying for CEO for the entire company to worry about? She shakes her head. The whole point of this competition is for us to get our hands dirty, and besides, it's the right thing to do for the future, even if it doesn't help me win. She puts a reassuring hand on your arm. I'm glad Evan was busy today. I can't imagine doing any of this without you. You flush with pleasure, but you don't let yourself get distracted. Instead, you and Sam brainstorm until you come up with the perfect plan for moving forward. After another hour plotting and planning, you and Sam are satisfied with the afternoon's work. Thanks, Anna. I can't wait to start putting this into action. I'm happy to help. She holds the door open for you. Let's take the long way to the office. It's a beautiful day. Good idea. Let's walk through the park. After you. You and Sam head outside, both of you bundled up against the chill in the air. As you and Sam walk side by side, you can't help noticing several couples holding hands, snuggling, and getting warm in each other's arms. I love when autumn starts to turn into winter. That's the best time for romance. Yeah, well, I prefer summer turning to autumn. Is that a hint? No, it's the truth. I prefer Halloween more than Christmas. Change my mind, I dare you. It's just an observation. Everybody's getting ready to hunker down with their special someone. Hmm. Sam pulls you in a secluded spot and takes you in her arms. She reaches out to cup your cheek. Willing to buy special someone. EST. There's no one I'd rather hunker down with than you, Anna. You throw your arms around Sam's neck and pull her mouth to yours. She tastes like coffee and chocolate. Rrr, her lips impossibly warm against the cold air. I know this is a terrible idea, but I can't help myself. You stroke her tongue with your own, her whole body giving itself over to her. We should definitely stop. 
Oh yeah, totally. If you're dying to hold on you, she, her lips travel down your neck. People are gonna start to wonder where we are. Mm, let them wonder. Even though through all your layers you can feel how hot her body is, how solid and determined as well. Mm, let her take control. Her dark, intense gaze holds you in place. You let your head fall back as she lavishes your neck with kisses. Sam, I like it when you're at my mercy like this. Please. She teases you with a series of soft, slow kisses. One hand trails down your side until it cups your ass, forcing you to hitch your leg around her hip. Yes. She shows no mercy as she takes control of the feeling of her mouth moving relentlessly over yours is almost too much to bear until she groans and pulls herself away, her breathing ragged. She cups, she reaches up to cup your cheek. You're dangerous, and you're one to talk. She kisses you one last time, a fleeting promise of more to come, and she steps back and offers you her hand. You can say I make your way to lobby elevators to say goodbye. The lobby isn't crowded at this time of day, so she relaxes into a smile. Great work today, Anna. I'm happy you're here. Thank you. That means a lot. She leans closer intensity in every line of her bearing. In fact, a call from behind you causes you to turn around a few feet away. You spot. I'm gonna go with Sophia, Robin, or Addie. God damn it, I'm good at this. I just had a sneaking suspicion, let's be real. Addie's expression is casually neutral. Almost too casually neutral. Hey, Anna, I was coming to see uh, if you're done with your meeting yet. I have a few questions about the polymer structures we discussed. You couldn't have called? Uh, yes, I was just um, saying goodbye to Miss Dalton. You do your best to appear neutral. Sorry about that, we got talking about the twins and lost track of time. Sam takes her cue from you and nods with friendly detachment. I'll be sure to tell him you said hello. Addie waits until Sam walks away before joining you in the elevator. Anna, what's going on? That didn't look like business conversation. What do you mean? Just that everyone knows you used to work for Miss Dalton, and now I have to wonder where your true loyalty lies, robotics or the lab? My loyalty lies in my groin! I care about the whole company. Sam had some questions about making the robotics division more eco-friendly. It's for the good of everyone. Are you sure about that? I wouldn't lie to you. Addie looks like he wants to believe you, but there's a troubled expression in his eyes. Eh, yeah, go on and ask, buddy. No, 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 go on and say it. There's something between you two, isn't there? I can feel it. Sam and I are good friends. It's as close as truth as you can get. You really don't want to lie to Addie. You feel a pang of frustration at Sam for putting you in this position. I try not to talk too much about it, but especially in the lab, sometimes we hang outside of work. <sighs> I thought so. You're close with the kids, right? Yeah, they're rascals, but I love them. Sorry to jump on you like that. I just want to make sure you don't get caught up between Sam and Sophia. It's obvious they have a hard time being, um, professional after their breakup. You fight a grimace, considering the current position. It's a little late for that. Come on, I'll fill you on in the details of the meaning. You'll, um, like what Sam has in mind. Yeah, how about those, uh, polymers there, uh, Addy? Over the next couple of weeks, things start to calm down. Everyone at work is busy, happy, especially since the Thanksgiving holidays are fast approaching. Yeah, whatever. Thanksgiving overrated. But we're not gonna talk about it. Friday before a whole week of vacation is always my favorite time at the office. Oh, you can say that again. He even almost smiled at me in there. Hicks, or it didn't happen. I can hear you, you know. You shoot him an apologetic look, but Evan ignores you as he hands everyone out copies of the cost and analysis for the plastic alternative. These numbers look good now, but if you spend too much time standing around and talking, that'll change. As Evan continues talking, you look through the rest of the papers at the bottom, you see the same numbers for other departments. Looks like manufacturing isn't doing all that well. Are you listening, Anna? I asked you to come to my office for a moment. Yes, sorry. I'll be there. You follow Evan to his office, he closes the door behind you. So... Is this about the project? 
Uh, there are a few things I needed to wrap up before the break, so if there's anything you need. Things like slipping upstairs for a secret meeting. What are you talking about? I know everything, Anna. The meetings are sneaking out the lies. It all makes sense now. You've been sleeping your way to the top! Yeah. Okay, buddy. <laughs> that's, that's adorable. Well, first and foremost, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Please know uh, what to do on the screen. Like the video, share the video, share the channel. Uh, be really special. And make sure to hit that subscribe button. Really means a lot, and uh, you uh, want to become a part of the community. You know, really means a lot to us. And it really helps us out, too. So do keep that in mind, too. So, uh, yeah, first and foremost, I just want to get into this chapter real quick, break down real quick. Um, Addy at least came to us and been like, you know, he was worried about, you know, the d the department and everything else. And he came at us from a neutral perspective, a friend perspective, you know. He's, and, and we were like, go on, say it, you know. And, and, and yeah, we had a friendship. Um... Evan coming at us very occasionally, and let me tell you the real world ramifications, because this does happen in the real world. When this happens, you go to HR. Seriously, this is highly, uh, where should I even begin with this? But it's uh, not appropriate. It's, uh, yeah, really not. This is something that needs to go to HR. Um, first and foremost, Sophia hired us, not Sam. Uh, secondly, as Sam stated, oh, she had asked for Evan first. You know? Um, and then the woman will, you know, she can definitely testify that she went and was willing to talk to anyone else in the lab that she ran into probably first, or asked for a senior member, which would have been any of the guys, um, and then we would have been last. But, since everyone except for Evan was out of the office, and that woman can certainly, uh, state that, uh, basically, you know, hey, he was very rude to me, you know, the whole nine years, it, 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 hey, buddy, I hate to tell you this, in, in the real world, you're only going to get two seconds before someone looks at you and goes, never do this again or you'll lose your job. So, again, at least if you're at a halfway decent company. Uh, luckily, things are changing, um, especially for people who uh, have this happen to them, and, and uh, luckily people are losing their jobs when they come at you like this. So, uh, Evans of the world, get uh, effed. Thanks for watching. Catch y'all later. Peace out.